Yo, what is up guys and gals? It's your boy Joey Kane and today we're going to be going over how you can become more creative, how you can simulate sparring better by yourself. So if you're someone who doesn't really have people to train with, if you're someone who can't make it into like a boxing gym all the time or something like that, here are some drills that you can use, some strategies that you can implement into your training so that you can be more ready for when you're sparring, when you're fighting, when you're in the ring, when you have live stuff going on. So hey, if you're tuning in for the very first time, my name is Joey Kane. I run sub7fitness.com, which is a website and company that's dedicated to helping you build the body of your dreams with the lifestyle you enjoy. I love talking about fitness, talking about boxing, martial arts, and stuff like that because I grew up doing it. I also love to talk about intermittent fasting, so if you're interested in that, then definitely subscribe to the channel, turn on notification bells so you never miss out on the info you need to build the body of your dreams with the lifestyle you enjoy. But without further ado, let's get into it right now. This is a part of my MBF series where I take boxing, take martial arts, take fitness, Put them all together so I can show you how to burn some extra calories, get better at defending yourself, all kinds of stuff like that. To preface this video, I'm not a boxing coach, even though I have helped people start boxing, start doing MMA, stuff like that. Really, what I love to do is help transform people's bodies through fitness. But now, to the topic of the video. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be working on different ways that you can help simulate sparring in your training. The very first one is a fairly simple drill. All you need is a heavy bag, a bob, or if you don't have any of that, you can do it while shadow boxing. So you can do it without any equipment whatsoever. And that's going to be, you're going to pick a combo, you're going to throw the combo, jab cross, and then you are going to envision the opponent throwing that same combo back at you. So if I walk forward, if I'm coming forward, we're boxing, I'm moving around the ring, throw a jab cross, then I would slip the jab, slip the cross come back out. Or, let's say I go jab cross, I would slip the jab, pull on the cross, and then throw cross back. Now if I pull and then throw, then he's going to do the same thing. So we're going to imagine that my cross misses because he pulls and he throws a cross. Boom, and then we're going to reset from there. So really what you're doing is you're throwing whatever combo you like against the bag and then imagining that there's an opponent there instead of a bag and that they're throwing it back at you. So what's really, really easy for this one would be throw a jab, he throws a jab. Jab, he throws a jab. Jab, he throws a jab. Jab, cross, I'm gonna pull, and then boom. He's gonna throw a jab, cross, and he's gonna pull. If we throw uh, just a hook, then I'm gonna imagine him throwing the hook. Boom, boom. So easy little things like that. That's a really good way to simulate it because it gets you out of the routine of just throwing a million punches or going just for conditioning, anything like that. If you're just throwing against the bag and doing nothing else, you're just going to be used to standing there and not moving. What you want to be used to is moving, throwing punches while you're being dynamic, throwing, rolling, slipping, all that kind of stuff. And this will help you do that. So whatever combo you throw, he's going to throw right back at you. The second way that you can do it, one that's a little bit more simple, might be even better if you're more at the beginner level, is you're going to throw a combination, let's say jab cross, and then what you're going to envision the opponent throwing back is just the last punch that you threw. So if I go jab, boom, jab. If I go jab, cross, boom, I'm gonna pull, throw a cross, he's gonna throw a cross. So I might move back, I might come in, boom. If I go jab, cross, hook, then I'm gonna envision that he slipped my hook and threw his own hook, so I'm gonna roll under it. So whatever punch it is that you threw last, you're going to envision him throwing back at you or her throwing back at you. Basically, this is an easier version of the last drill because you don't have to be ready for a jab, cross, slip, slip, and then go back into throwing, you're just envisioning the last punch. So if I go jab, cross, hook, then boom, he throws a hook, I'm right back over here, I'm ready to follow up. Now the next one that we're going to put in is if you have a partner available, but it's someone who might not like sparring, like for me, for example, my cameraman is kind of a pacifist. So even though he does practice martial arts sometimes, he doesn't really like to actually spar with me. He's also much shorter than I am, so we don't spar all that often. But what you can do is you can call it out. So let's say one, two, 
three, four. So what he's going to do is he's going to call out numbers and I'm going to aim for those different spots. So let's say he goes one, boom, go throw a jab to the head. Let's say he goes one, 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 four, one, four. So basically you can throw whatever punch you want, but you're going to be working in combinations as they call it different numbers. So you're never really going to aim for someone's shoulder in a fight, but it's just going to help you with accuracy, help you with recognizing openings. So let's say he goes one, two, here, here. Now let's say this is what I'm imagining. I'm imagining that I threw to the head, he slipped, and now his head is right here. He, you know, slipped off to the side, so I go one, two, boom. Or he goes one, two, three, or one, two, three. Basically, you're going to try to envision that the opponent is moving and you're trying to hit them while you're up like without having to make the combos up on your own because that's going to help you get better at reacting to specific things at reacting to different openings if you have a partner or even if you just record yourself the day before on your phone saying a random order of numbers between one and four then you're going to be able to go through that once you've forgotten the order and really really work on reacting to things as quickly as possible you can even call things out like let's say you go on your phone you go one one two one one slip three, four, slip, roll, and then boom. When you listen to it back, when you're right there, you're gonna try to do all of the commands that you've given yourself as fast as possible. So if it's one, two, if it's one, two, that wasn't a slip. If it's one, two, pull, if it's one, roll, and then hook, or anything like that. Now those are three different ways that you can work on simulating sparring better in your own practice. If you're not able to get to the gym as much, if you're not able to practice with other people as often as you'd like, these are some ways that you can really help build up the confidence you have in live fire. Now, of course, this is not going to be as good as actually sparring with other people. That's going to help you get comfortable with more styles faster. But this is better than just going in, hitting a heavy bag, throwing a million punches, and never actually moving, not working on dynamic body control and stuff like that. I hope you found this video super helpful. If you did, definitely... Drop me a like down below, and don't forget to subscribe, comment what you'd like to see next. If you uh, want to take a step back and watch the other videos in this playlist in the MBF, that would probably be really helpful for you as well, where I take boxing, take martial arts, take fitness, put them all together, and try to help you out as much as I can. If you want one of the best programs on the entire market, head over to sub7fitness.com, check them out. If you have any questions, you can definitely follow me on Instagram, send me a DM. I'm happy to respond to pretty much all my DMs as long as they're genuine. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.